I'm part of a group called Team uh, Grenoble. It's a, a joke between Inebon and uh, Grenoble. And we are a member of uh, Inebon uh, chapter in France. We have a, a website that you can visit every time. It's HTTPS www.grenoble.fr. It's in French and in English. And um, Team Grenoble is not an association. It's just a group of fellow makers and hackers who join their skill together to create new solutions that are not available at Thingiverse or in any catalog. And we, after making our first Phoenix model, we met some requests from people where the uh, traditional Phoenix end doesn't cope with the needs. So we found there was a need to do specific design for those people. And uh, we, we love that, uh, that job. And we, we know that there is hundreds of makers in France that could print traditional uh, enable hands. So there is a, some room for us to be a little bit more specific for answering needs that doesn't cope with the end. So we are a sort of additional group to uh, the enable uh, movement to produce special stuff that we don't find on catalogs or in Fingiverse and so on. We are all validated makers in France. There is a, I don't know, in, in the rest of the world, but in France, you, to be able to bring hands, we have to be validated by, by the chapters. So we have to build the first hand show that we, we are able to do everything correctly and then we are validated uh, makers. All the people of the, of the group, Marie-Laure, Philippe, Fabien, Patrice and Younes, we are not same some town. Fabien uh, has uh, relocated to, to Paris and Younes is in Lyon. So we are a sort of a Web 3.0 group. We are working together on, on the same projects. That's also something new for us, for the concept. All the projects are done by the people. So sometimes some are busier than the other one. So there's always somebody to work on the project. Second thing interesting is that we do collaboration with local and national uh, occupational uh, therapists, the ergotherapeutes, comme on dit en français. We also do some collaboration with local research labs, especially uh, thanks to Philippe, who is a teacher and researcher in an uh, engineering school in Grenoble. And uh, we used to give them some projects for their diploma. And at the end of the year, they, we benefit from the research. We are also conducting the research with them to be sure that they are doing what we want. All our projects are published and available under the, the CCBY and CSA uh, license. I know a question from John who say, where can we find your STL? So the answer, John, is that STLs could be available but they will not be useful because each STL is fully dedicated to the needs of one specific boy or girl or man. But the methodology is here and by following the methodology and the design we are publishing on our CAD software and we are here to help, we can say this is fully open and available for everybody. And we also, we already have people from USA uh, asking for information, how we do this and how we do that. So uh, we, we, are, uh, we are open. Source. And we also have an open source hardware certification for one of our design, which is the Flexibone, which is mainly created by Philippe. And uh, we have this uh, OSW number eight. Who are our recipients? We are a innovative resources and we, we offer free solution to help people for non-conventional apparatus. Uh, something interesting to, to remember is that uh, Team Grenoble is not an association. Okay? That's, we're just a group of fellow guys. We have absolutely no found, no money from anybody. So we, we are working, we are designing and offering stuff just like a charity. This is our way to help people who need something. So first we started with childs and adults suffering from anesthesia. Then, thanks to a doctor uh, of the hospital, we have to take care also of child suffering of arthrogrippose, which is a, another disease where the muscle for, from the end are blocked and so on. And we work for adults amputees. And something new is that we have been requested by a neurologist uh, to, to find a solution for people suffering from tremor. So here is a list of what we've done to show what when I speak about specific solution, we have done this uh, Frandex, Frandex, which is a joke between uh, the index, which is the, the fourth finger and the break. Uh, we have a, an adult who wants to do some mountain bike and he was unable to break. 
So it's might quite dangerous when you do mountain bike not to use brakes. So uh, he has a, a, a part of his um, phalanx, the index phalanx, and uh, we have to build something which plug on his finger, uh, which was a little bit longer and with the, the right uh, aspect to, to use the brake. And it worked very well. You know, for adults, we develop uh, a terminal for somebody who has very, very short limb and you want to type on his uh, iMac and you also want to use his tablets as well. So we build this, uh, this terminal, which has something very special. It's here. There is a special part of, of foam which permits to work with uh, tablets. For people who try to use PLA over tablets, they know that it doesn't work. So we, we find a solution to use uh, smartphones and tablets with terminals. We also, we, we do uh, prosthetics, but we also do auto, autosis. So this was a cook who has a very special uh, disease. I could not even pronounce the name in French, so I don't, I don't even try to translate. Uh, this guy could not move his thumb. So with the help of some students of Philippe, uh, we make different uh, release of this uh, flexible autosis made of TPU, and it works well. So when the, the cook is going to his, uh, his job, you just have to put his autosis, a, a, a glove, and then he can work just like before the disease. Then for adults, uh, I said that we, we work with amputees. So here we have our friend now. We, we work for her for more than three years. Uh, this uh, lady, uh, 45, something like that, went to the hospital for something which was not so complicated, a bad vi virus, and uh, they have to uh, remove uh, two ends and two feet. On the right end here, they just let uh, the, the palm. On the left end, they cut, you see the fingers, they cut uh, most of the fingers. So we have to, to build something for, uh, for writing, so this works well. She can write now. And also she paints, so she can do some, some, some nice painting. So we build this terminal. We have a ball joint here where you can, you can adjust the position of the fork as you want. So now she can eat by, by herself. Then she wanted to play cards with, a, with a, a family. You can see that we created this terminal, which is always the same in here. We have a screw, and then you can plug the specific terminal you want. And uh, this is just the beginning. So when she will ask something more, we, we can easily add a new terminal to, to the socket. And then, if, of course, she asks something more. Now she can walk with her prosthetics of, uh, of, the, of the feet. Now she wants to go hiking with the family. So we build this, uh, this walking stick, another bowl point, but a gigantesque, and it can be open and so on. And from this good idea, Younes in Lyon built this skiing stick for a, a young guy. But skiing could be more dangerous than walking in the field. So he built something on top here, which is an emergency unblocking system. That means that you skiing and you, you fall. Then the system here is unblocking the system and then the, the end is, is free. This is marvelous. In the reuse of our existing solution, we are right now working for this little boy, five years old, who has a double agenesia. So you can, you can see he's suffering on both sides of Agenesia. So of course, he could not uh, do anything. So the, the mother should uh, feed him. And so we took the idea of the uh, fork holder and we adapt here the socket to his arm. And we try something we call the suction, suction uh, socket. That means that we found with the help of some doctors, some special foam, which... Uh, do a sort of suction on the skin. So for the time being, uh, it's still on the works, but uh, this first try is, is quite a success and he's very happy to, to be able to eat by himself. Next step also, as he's in school, will be to do something for him to learn to write. This is a, a special request from a young girl. It was uh, asking to do a prosthetic hands uh, in Evon. And then when we discussed with her, uh, we discovered that the thing she wants is to own a knife because she wants to cut a meat by herself. She wants to push the spaghetti by herself. 
So we build this socket, uh, and uh, now she she eats by herself. She's very happy to, to have lunch, uh, to cut the meat, to cut everything by herself. Here we have uh, a girl, a little girl, nine years, who has what we call the uh, congenital club hand. So in French, c'est une main botte. That means that she has a, a, a hand which is 90 degrees from, from the arm with few fingers, but she wants to, to use a, a bike. So we build this special support where she can put her arm and hold the bike as well. And uh, this was uh, very interesting and, and she was, of course, very happy. The only issue is that there is no brake on the left hand. And we build hands as well. We start with, uh, with ends. So this is an uh, arm that done by the, the British team. So this was our first enable delivery. The, the little boy was very happy, called Matteo. So he wanted he want a logo with an M. He, he liked uh, uh, Batman. So we, so we built ends. And we also have a flexible end, which is uh, special because the boy has a small part of a thumb. So we have to remove the thumb from, from the original stuff and to put an extender of the other thumb. So that was, um, I would say, the catalog's hands. Then we found this uh, hand from an uh, Inebon team in the USA, uh, Jacqueline Buchanan, who, who did a very, very good job by creating a uh, hand. This hand, uh, the interest for this hand is that it, it was available in uh, electronic format, means that we can use it. And from this uh, Buchanan hand, we start to, to adapt. So that was the start of our own made uh, hand. So from this, uh, from this uh, CAD, uh, CAD view, we can obtain this. This was the uh, second end we delivered to a young student, uh, 18 years old. Uh, the first one was the right end. Then we have to build a, a left end. And uh, this is the, the quality of ends we have right now. We had some special uh, uh, wrist locking system here. The feedback of, the, of Natalie was that when she wanted to keep something, it was very tiring for her to keep the end down, to keep the, the finger locked. So we built this a special design to have a, a wrist locking stuff. And then from, uh, from end to end, we build our first uh, electri electrically assisted uh, proof of concept. If you look to... Uh, the community, the uh, prosthetic clinic community, there is a lot of, uh, of design for electrically uh, assisted uh, hand, but most of them are the uh, electrically uh, assisted hand for people without hand. If you have a poem, you could not use them because they was always done from uh, design coming from robots. And robots don't have hands. All the hands we, we see on, on the market derived from, from robots. We have to keep a real poem inside the end. That's why the, the motors, the batteries, the electronics have to be on the country. The, the next step for us will be to reduce the size of all these electronic and, uh, and mechanical parts and also to reduce the, the weight of these parts. This is the, the end uh, I saw before with the, the lady who is wearing the end. So when you are some meters uh, apart from her, uh, it's uh, very difficult to, uh, to see when you, you met her in, on the street that she has a, a plastic end on the left end. Second part of this uh, presentation is uh, the process of creating a solution. We, we follow this step nearly uh, every time. Step number one is the discussion with the recipient to understand what you want, what the, the, the recipient wants. Step number two is to do the molding of the existing member because we are most of the time doing a socket. The socket has to fit with the, with the member. So we are using alginat, very interesting uh, material. Uh, in few, a few minutes after uh, doing the molding, we, we have the capability to fill with plaster inside. So we create a cast with the existing member uh, with, with plaster. Step number four, once we remove the alginate, we scan the cast to obtain a mesh of the member. The mesh of the member could be used to print, but it's useless because it's just a member who has the prosthetic. So we have to transform this mesh into a CAD compatible uh, file. Uh, this is called uh, often the uh, B-Rep. That means that after that, we can design around this file. Then the, the design is, is a lot of interactive phases until we can print the first part. 
So then we repeat step six, seven, and eight until we get a working model because it's all, it's never worked from the first time. Then we make a test with the recipient. Of course, we need to adjust it. We go back to step six, and then we make the last one. So molding, as I told you, here we have a, a girl suffering of arthropos. She could not hold correctly her pen. So we make the molding with a fake pen between the thumb and the forefinger. We put that in, in a bottle with alginate. And then when we remove the alginate, we have the exact aspect of an end. On the other part, on, on the right here, is the end of Natalie. So we can see that uh, it will be difficult for, for us to build uh, something using the, the fingers. Another type of cast here on the left, you see the, the end of the girl who want to cut the meat. She had only two fingers. That's the reason we make this socket which is quite long because we have to insert the uh, end into the socket. On the right here, the cast of the, of the girl with the pen. And another one, a little girl, uh, but we don't have the solution for the time being because she's too young and uh, it was very difficult to, to get her attention a few minutes. So it, she was always moving, and so we could, not, uh, we could not build anything for her. So scanning from the, the plaster to get the, the mesh, this is a, called the STL file. It is a thousands of uh, triangles. With triangles, we can design the, the surface we want. Then we move to the CAD development. So we are using an online CAD system called Unshape. Unshape is a commercial and highly professional uh, designing system. The good thing is that Unshape license is free for makers. The counterparts will be that uh, the project are always public. So you can think that when we, we are in the open hardware and open software, so <laughs> it's not an issue for us to be public. Maybe the, the counterpart will be that we hope that Unshape will stay uh, free for, for us for, for 10 years. From the first drawing to the final test, we can see that our design was fitting the needs when we put the, the result on the STL file. So we see that it's really done. We are designing in context. That means that we are always looking to what we are designing compared to the, the receiving end. And so it's not a miracle. It's just the result of a good design. Then we do the, some printing. So on the left, I make a, a PLA, a blue PLA solution and a skin color uh, TPU solution because I didn't know at that time if uh, the PLA, which is a solid uh, plastic, was a good solution or if a uh, flexible was a good solution. And in fact, the girl preferred the blue one. So we make tests, so she has to, to, to do some, some, some writing. So you see, so she's still <laughs> at the very beginning of uh, writing a, a, a story, but she can uh, write, she can draw, and she was happy to, uh, to use now the pen with the right position. And the therapist also was very happy uh, of the result. Uh, the contact and the exchange between uh, the team and uh, an adult or between the team and uh, a child is uh, it's really different. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's more difficult to, to get uh, information about the need of a child uh, because it's difficult to, to get uh, his uh, feedback or, uh, or to discuss with him. So. Uh, Generally speaking, we work with the parents and we work also with the occupational therapists who, uh, who are dealing with the, the disease or the, the issue of, uh, of the child. So uh, this is with the help of this team, uh, the child, the parents, the occupational therapist and ourselves uh, that we, we are working in this team to, to define the best solution uh, with them. For any case, for any, any situation. The big difference between adults and children is that while in the West, uh, children like the superhero hands, in the mm. West, adults tend to want more natural looking hands uh, like the ones that have been shown based on the yeah. flower or now the kinetic hand. Um, in more conservative cultures in the Arab world, in uh, Africa and India, children also are looking for devices that will uh, not be obvious. Whereas in the West, uh, it's the envy of the other children. We keep in touch with them and we are, our commitment is that we will follow the needs. The, the needs could be 
uh, from the first guy with the arm with the uh, with the Batman. Uh, he doesn't want an, an arm anymore, but he wants a specific uh, terminal to to do bike or to to eat or something else. So we we keep the contact with everybody, and and when they grow and when they need something special. Uh, uh, bigger, we will do another release, another release of the of the of their solution, and they will benefit of uh, our uh, increase of knowledge and uh, solution and so on. So a very top-notch software, which is uh, what we call the parameter parameter by, based uh, CAD system. Then you can adapt any uh, any measurement, any any aspect with the parameters. So if you want to increase the scale from 1.6%, uh, you can do it. If you want to, to extend the length of something, you, you can do it and everything is, is transformed accordingly. This is a reason why we are not using uh, stuff like uh, free stuff like uh, OpenSCAD and so on, which is much more complicated to adapt when you modify something. Something, something very interesting is that as we are not uh, in the same place as we are not working at the same time, we are using a collaborative tool where we can all work on the same project even at the same time. And it's very often that Philippe and, and I, we met at, ni at nine o'clock in the evening and we work together on the same part and we exchange, we chat, we modify. As you know, much more than me on engineering, you can teach me something. So it's very easy to, uh, to use this uh, this very powerful tool, and when we can do whatever we want. So adjusting a design for a kid who is, who is growing is not an issue. Um, I would add that in the United States, for example, uh, it's prosthetics are expensive. Um, they can be from five to fifty thousand dollars for for an arm, and not everyone has insurance that will cover it. And even if you do have insurance that will cover it, if you're a growing child, you will outgrow it within a year or two. The fact that our devices are inexpensive uh, and easily replaced, I think compensates for the fact that they're flimsier and may break. Uh, and so that's actually a real advantage of our lightweight, inexpensive volunteer-made devices over medical grade expensive, indestructible devices, which of course don't grow. Exactly, for, just for an idea about the price, Natalie or Lady with, uh, without hand has a commercial uh, mioelectric mio uh, hand. It costs 38,000 euros. So if, you, you, if you, see, you see my screen right now, I have uh, my second camera working. So this is our 38,000 pesos. <laughs> of course, it's not that good looking. Okay. But it is still cheap. And one day, one day it will, it will, it will work everywhere. So um, this, is, uh, this is the result of a group of a student uh, working uh, under Philip's control with our uh, request, requirement. She benefits she benefit from the end we, we've done ourselves. And here they adapt some, some, some uh, servo, servos and so on to make the end working. So um, let, me, let me try. Normally, a demo is not working. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, don't smile. <laughs> we, we have the, okay. Very nice. It works. Okay, so here we try to, uh, to, to be better than the new electric, new electric uh, sensors. We have a very good idea. Somebody uh, has a very good idea to insert here a, um, a micro joystick. The, the micro joystick you may have in a, in a PlayStation or in a, in a handle. And uh, the, Natalie 
is moving the, the micro joystick with the muscle of the thumb. So in theory, it worked great. In uh, design lab, it was great as well. But when Natalie answered uh, her end into the, or in pa uh, palm into the end, the the muscle was not exactly where where the uh, where the sensor was, and it was very difficult was very difficult to adjust it. So then we are building a new a new end. We are building a new end with a removing part. So we, it will be easier for us to insert here the sensor and to adapt. She can put her hand inside, inside the, 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 the plastic end. And then we can find the exact solution or a muscle uh, on, the, on, the, on the thumb to, uh, to command the motors. Here, we are using an external joystick just for, for the design of the software and so on. But the, the, the goal will be to put a macro joystick inside, inside the, uh, the, the bone. So you see that we, are, we have a lot of ideas uh, and we try, we try to, uh, to find solution to, uh, to cope with, with the needs. Uh, just one thing. Look here, something very uh, easy to build. I told you that we, we created a, a wrist lock. The wrist lock means that there is a, 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 a wheel with, with the teeth. And then when we, when, when we, we move the, the, the end down, the end stay in that position. With the second end, the lady will have just to remove it and then it gets moved. Okay. Something else to show here. Uh, here is a new it's a new palm. Okay. We uh, when we start to, to use the the, the, the end from uh, Jackin, uh, the end was molded with a I would say a standard position of the end. It was okay, but when we try to to, um, to, to pick something to uh, end on the bottle and so on, we, we found that the, the, the thumb was not at the right position. So we are, we are for the, this is the first, the first uh, try. We are trying to find a way to move, to move the, the thumb in two position. This is, I would say, this is the rest position. And here would be the picking position. So that time, the finger, the thumb, and the forefinger, we close together correctly to pick something. So this is quite complicated. So here it works because we are moving the, the finger by hand. The, the goal will be to, autom to, to automate this by, uh, by a solenoid or something else to move the finger in the solution, in, in the position or not, in, in or out. Everything is printed. We, we, we don't accept the molding we are doing to mold the end. We have no... Uh, we doesn't know how to do molding stuff. Okay, so it's, uh, we are not chemical, chemical uh, engineers, but we, we all have printers at home, printers at school, printers everywhere. So we are printing everything. So we are using uh, uh, filament PLR, which is a, a, a very easy way. And we also use flexible. This one here, you can, you can see it's flexible. You see, and here it's it's hard. This is a, a an attempt to to be plugged onto the one finger of Natalie. The concept is not finished. 
in fact it works except that it doesn't it doesn't stay on the, <laughs> the finger so it doesn't work so the the, the kinetics the, the cinematic is working well and but but it doesn't uh, stick correctly on the uh, on the on the on the forefinger so we have to find a solution I'm really curious about the, your, your interest in distributing the fabrications, the, the, the fabrication steps of their hands. Uh, what we see with open hardware in general is that you can design something somewhere and have it replicated or, uh, other places. So I understand that your designs are very specific. However, how do you uh, deal with um, like distributed needs? Do you try to find um, makers where the, the patient is to have the hands fabricated there and what happens if what is happening if you cannot find someone to make it there uh, are you sending it well, in fact it's um, it, we did not explain the the, the process um enable france is a, is the association which is collecting all the requests so it he has a, a facebook page is well known and so on so so somebody who needs something uh, will connect to Enable and will become a member. This is free. You become a member and you say, my, my girl, my boy needs an end and so on. So uh, he explained uh, what, what, what uh, he needs. So then the management of Enable France will match these needs with makers. If you live in, uh, in Nice, they will find some people in the south of France. If you need near, near Lille, they will find somebody in Lille. In Lille. Okay. So that, at that time, they, they ask the, the makers from the right, the right place, are you able to print an N for this uh, little girl? The answer is uh, most of, mostly yes. So then they are ma matched with the, with the request, with the recipient, and then they, they will build. In our case, um, we are requested even by uh, Enable France, even if we are not living in the right place. For example, we are doing this, uh, this uh, special trick for the, the, the bilateral uh, 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 genesis guy, little boy in Paris. Uh, and we start to work with, uh, with him before Fabien moved to Paris. So the good thing is that Fabien moved to Paris, so he can, he can go there. But uh, uh, it is not an issue. We already, uh, we already work with people in Saint-Etienne and, and, and anywhere. So the, the, the most difficult part, if we could not meet, is that uh, they, have to, they have to do the molding by themselves because we want to exactly fit the needs. We're not going to build, to build something which is not use, usable. So doing, doing a, a, a mold is very tricky. You find thousands of tutorials on, on internet and, you can, and can, yeah, you can do it. And then uh, there is another part is that people uh, in, in the country here in, in Grenoble, therapists, they, they, they know us. And when they have a special need, they ask us directly uh, and, uh, to, to, to work with us. So we, we send them to Enable because we want to be Enable uh, stamp, I would say. So they go to Enable, become a, a member, and then they ask, we would like to work with Team Grenoble. And then it's going back to us uh, officially. Uh, I would add that uh, there are similar matching systems um, in the English-speaking world. Uh, there's one at enablewebcentral.com, um, and uh, I think they have a similar system in Brazil as well. These systems are not well integrated, um, but it is also the case that there are international collaborations. Uh, the U.S. group will get queries from overseas. Sometimes we will refer them to groups like uh, Enable France. Sometimes an American volunteer will do the device and we will um, send the device. But getting the fit right, getting the customization right is difficult if you can't go back and forth with the client. Um, just acknowledging that, I will say that if it were not so difficult and expensive to ship devices across international borders, we have many volunteers who are eager to make devices for people, but they're not finding recipients who want them. So if someone 
or an NGO would like to provide free shipping, that would be a really valuable non-monetary way of supporting a volunteer organization. I might have a suggestion. I've seen in the chat that there were some questions about um, international organization support or like a request for content. And uh, there is coming in Geneva, where I study, the, um, um, the, something called the OSI Geneva Forum. Um, it has started as a way to integrate citizen science and collaborative designs and production manufacturing approaches, the Fab Lab World and so on at the United Nations. So I think it started last year. Um, I would advise you to, to just check on that. I think, um, or, or I can also introduce you to, to some people there. They might be really interested in showcasing what you do. Um, yes, whether please. The friends or the global movement, because I think it's totally relevant to, to the approach there. Uh, one of our limitations as a distributed volunteer organization is in fact connecting up uh, with each other and with uh, larger international NGOs. And one of the reasons I'm very happy to be a part of this conference is so that you and Pierre and others can in fact act as liaisons and help us make those connections. All right then, I'll try to pass the good word. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, your three presentations. Uh, I feel it's really great. Um, so of course uh, we can uh, get more information on the on the website of Enable and uh, we will do a follow-up with uh, all participants to say we here are the information you can you can find. And don't forget uh, grenable.fr. Enable Nepal.org.